What up, what up, your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you for tuning in, you guys. So, guess what? We are going to get into Love After Lockup. Y'all, Love After Lockup, when I tell you, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's one of those shows that is so bad, it's good. This season has been definitely delivering, and oh, Lord, uh, Troy Mama, y'all, Troy Mama is the definition of the cuckoo auntie that you gotta make sure you don't let get too drunk at the cookout because she gonna say something that's gonna start some sh okay she <laughs> she literally is the pity of me of that so um yeah let's not waste the time let's go ahead and get into the episode if you're new to my channel appreciate you for tuning in make sure you hit that subscribe button everybody else you already know what to do hit that like button drop down in the comments let me know just stop by and tell me what you think about the episode okay so let's go ahead and get into some of the little ones that are a little more yang yang yang, which is Kim and Joey. Long story short, show, <laughs> long story short, um, uh, Joey has made it back in time for Christmas. They did the whole match in pajama situation. You know, they put the kids to bed. They decorated the, you know, the Christmas tree. And um, little did he know, Kids is going to kid and the boys ended up coming in their room like 630 in the morning. So now he's, the, the, this is what happens with a lot of dudes. It's always so easy to, to paint that picture for the woman of like, yeah, we're going to be a family. You know, I'll be dad. I'll be, you know, the man of the house because they're only, when it comes to them, you know, thinking about how they operate with kids they're not really thinking about the kids as an obligation to take care of. Like the responsibility of actually handling the kids, they really don't think that's their responsibility. So it's easy to, to for them to simply imagine, oh, you know, going outside and playing, you know, catch with the boys. Like that's what they picture when they talk about, you know, having kids. But for the woman, she's thinking about like, okay, this is a person who's now going to be attached to me and on the basis of it being my responsibility and the fact that Kim these aren't even his you know kids it's so much easier for him to be able to detach Nick's already detached from kids that is theirs so Joey coming into this picture already being having a history of addiction it it, it overwhelmed him and immediately after they did the Christmas presents he already on his phone typing and she takes him outside and guess what already got this man a car like sometimes i think these women are in a head where they feel like i'm gonna give him these things to set him up but it's like that's the, that's what they be catching y'all for like they use y'all to set them up to go run to the next one because these dudes don't know how to sit still out of prison it's just the truth um, and then, like I said, throwing on top of the fact that he has like a heroin addiction, he already is like overwhelmed and people who deal with addiction or alcoholism, it literally just takes that one thing to trigger them. So, um, she's asking him like, who you texting? He's just like, nobody. And she was like, nobody ain't gonna work for me. And like Kim is already thinking to herself, here we go. Like, this is exactly what I was worried about. You know, I don't like being in a situation of feeling like, you know, I, I don't know what he's doing, but she gave herself a little bit of reassurance because she said, but that's okay. You know, I might've got him, uh, I got him that car an hour ago and he already trying to run out, but that's okay because I put air tags in that bitch. So <laughs> she's like, I'm going to know where he going. And if he doing what he's not supposed to be doing, I'll take the car from him. And I said, Ooh, you one of those, you one of those, Kim, you going to blackmail this man into staying with you. Are you already this way, but you like you also like that? Because a, a lot of women do that. They buy basically essentially the the man's love slash obligation to the home, i.e. when they, you know, buy things for them, when they bring their kids into the situation and make their kids now um almost invested in this man. And so in hindsight or like in in, in a in a back thought my kids, you know, being attached to him means that, you know, he'll feel obligated to have to stay around because he's built this bond with these kids. And it's like, ladies, y'all can't force these men to do something they don't want to do. So when you get y'all's kids involved, this is where it's a problem because now here it is. We got a situation with Joey and Kim. Now, later on, who are we going to talk about? We got a situation with uh, Zariah and Troy and also with uh, Letitia and Keith. 
So let's go ahead and move on. But yeah, y'all, Joey, he out. He, you know, reminiscing on the fact that he lost his his friend, which caused him to rebel, which caused him, y'all, he was he was dealing that schmack already at uh, 15 years old, he said. So he he started early in the streets. But yeah, Joey, he he's just like, you know, it'll be good to just, you know, get out and take a breather. And I'm like, Joey, that's not, that's not going to work either. Every time, you know, you get overwhelmed, you don't get to just grab your keys and run and be like, I'll be back. And then spend all night out in, in, in the streets. Like, that's not going to work. Um, yeah, this is this is, this is is a relationship that's on its way down. We already know that. Moving on. Um, Julian and Christine. So, um, Christine, y'all, I actually felt for Christine this episode. And her story is like many people's story. You get a prescription for a, a, a surgery or something like that. People, you know, they break their arms or legs or, you know, have surgery. And then they, you know, prescribe them the pain medication. And the pain medication, therefore, rolls into an addiction. And then after your prescription either runs out or they stop you because you're refilling it too much, these people then got to get their high from somewhere else. And the cheapest option is typically heroin, meth, all those things, you know? Um, and that's what happened to her. So she's like, I went from, you know, being a nurse, having a job, having a car, a, a place to live, to, you know, losing my kids and living in my grandma's basement. And I'm just, I can imagine when you just look up and you're like, you're like what the f did I do? And now she's out and she wants to, you know, get her kids and try to build a relationship but she's dealing with the fact that her family also is not really trying to build the bridge as much as they could. Like, we'll put it that way. You know, Julian, he, you know, has a relationship with her family. And he's like, you know, they're nice and everything. But, like, they're not even doing anything. Like, she's out and nobody's throwing, like, a welcome home party. Like, nobody's, you know, doing anything like that. And then, you know, he... Uh, is trying to help her feel better by saying, well, you know, I hope my family will be able to fill that void. And she's like, well, have you even, you know, approached this, this topic with them and come to find out they don't know her past. And she's like, you know, I really do kind of feel like Julian's ashamed of me and he doesn't want to tell his family. And uh, yes, I do think majority of it is the fact that he's ashamed of, of Christine, but also, there is a little bit of part of it where I'm playing devil's advocate here where I do kind of understand what he's saying in the sense of like, that's just not somebody when you meet somebody's family, be like, hi, I love your, I love your son. Uh, hey, we met in jail or like, uh, I'm an inmate. I, you know, I just got out of prison. Like, that's just not something that you deduce to people when you first meet them. That's just like sometimes a bombard of, uh, of information and you know, them getting to know her for her, I can get why Julian wants to do that. But also, um, a big part of it also, too, is Julian, you, I think, are a little bit embarrassed that that you f fell in love with a woman who was an inmate. Julian, I'm just going to say it, is those dudes who are the ones that didn't get girls growing up. They're kind of insecure. And yeah, he was looking to write these stories about women in jail, but they know that they're not going to get the caliber of woman that they want. And so they punch down. And by being that, you know, getting some, some woman that they can be the knight in shining armor to, which is how Christine views him, where they can, you know, basically have a woman and fulfill this idea while, you know, just being a, being a quote unquote, you know, savior to a woman, like, oh, I'm a woman, i.e., the man who saved a girl from the strip club, you know, those type of dudes. Um, and so, yeah, I think Julian is kind of like that, but I do like that he is trying to support her and helping build a relationship with her kids. But as much as she wants to build a relationship with her kids, she has a son that's with her grandma, I mean, with her mom, and she has twins that are with the, the dad. And she's trying, she's thinking about like, she obviously wants to build a relationship with her son, but the family is constantly throwing back in her face, her history. And I can imagine that would be like, damn, like I don't live there no more. Like I don't live there no more, you know, but also too, I think with a lot of people who are in those situations of being 
addicts or alcoholics or whatever, the damage that they do with people, like expecting them to get over it at a, at a speed that's convenient for you also is unfair, especially depending on what you did to hurt these people. And you were their mom. Like you were a, a mom that like obviously starting it on, on drugs. And so that's not healthy for kids. And so that's something that in a sense where it's almost, that's going to take some time to, to be forgiven. But it's not fair that if she is trying to build a relationship and be better, that, that they are throwing that back in her face. I don't agree with that. And I also think of how the, uh, the mom subconsciously is doing it because if she can shame her more, then she'll feel better about how bad of a mom that she was to Christine. Because you want to acknowledge how Christine's a bad mom, but not understanding how that also correlates to you and also play like you play a part in that is something that you're not really facing. Yeah, you feel like you've made up for it, you know, and being a bad mom to Christine, but look at the after effects. Look at like the fact that she ended up becoming a bad mom also as well, like mama, you need to look in the mirror, like for real. Like you can't just be trying to, uh, you want Christine to forgive you and let you work to be a better mom, but then you not offer her that same grace. So yeah, Christine was just crying and as much as she wants to try and fix things with, you know, her mom and things, it's also a trigger for her because they do have a heated relationship. So they basically just drop off the cake at the house and at this moment are just really trying to uh, build that relationship with the kids and she's just crying. And I really did feel for her in that moment because you can just tell like she really wants to work on that. But uh, moving on. So next couple is, who else uh, do we have this season? Zuri and Troy. So Zuri and Troy, y'all, when I tell you that mama, Karen, that mama, as much as she is entertaining, could not be my mama. <laughs> Point blank, period. <laughs> Hold on, you guys. And I'm back. Okay, I had to go uh, grab my, my thing if it got finished charging. Um, I ended up getting, um, a new pen and it actually is, um, uh, mixed with, um, uh, shrooms. I'm starting to try and microdose. So yeah, this got done charging and I've been, you know, it's been, it's been doing the job. I'll just put it that way. It gives me the, the body feeling that I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, back to it. Let's get to Zuri and Troy. Um, Troy and his mama Karen are something else. He comes home. She walk in the house. Oh, this is nice. Like, give it real. Uh, what's, who says that? Tiffany Haddish. Oh, this is nice. She walking around the house smell good like she was just like sometimes ma'am just just hold it you ain't gotta say everything she like mm, and clean too because you know i'm the inspector and that really is low-key something that we can all say as a woman in particular like when the mother-in-law comes you really feel like you gotta not obviously yes be a cleanly person but there is just a judgment of like can she keep a household up and then also too, I'm starting to see also what type of like mama Karen is because later on when Zuri and uh, him kind of got into it, um, she was like saying, uh, well, you know, uh, at the end of the day, remember you the man. And so, you know, you put your foot down and let, let, let everybody know how it go. You know, tear everybody, you know, shut up and you put your foot down. Remember you the man. I was like, oh no. <laughs> Oh, no, not you being one of them. Like, oh, Lord. I want to be in your business. <laughs> but, and then proceeds to get in your business. Like, <laughs> oh, Karen. So, Karen also, on top of that. Oh, my God, y'all. Hold on. This chair is annoying me. All right, take two. This chair sometimes is like the latch sometimes doesn't go all the way in certain positions. So, the chair will just like slowly start sinking. And I do not like that. Um, but yeah, back to it. Karen, so she don't know how to keep her mouth closed. She just, it, it's word vomit. And it's kind of like, man, keep it to yourself sometimes. Because now here she is sitting down 
and immediately is getting into you know oh this is a good household son you know but shoot that big mama of yours i can't stand that like <laughs> she immediately started going into the baby moms how she you know don't like her she don't mess with her you know i can't believe this and that and you can like troy he's like yeah you know that but you know you know because she was like basically zuri kind of in a slick way was trying to ask like oh have things changed you know uh have things changed up there and she's like do you mean you know is, is she it do he need to go back no basically and he was like but i need to go see my daughter and he was like you know and at the end of the day too like you know i'm grateful for her because she you know raised my daughter while i was gone like you could tell troy tries to be he's not one of those dudes that is gonna bash his baby mama like even though the mama's going in on her he's definitely trying to maintain like just the relationship it's clear that he has somewhat like of a respect for her and that also kind of is off-putting zuri because she feels like oh you know hearing troy defend her all the time you know it's just making me feel some type of way um and it's like but that kind of is a good sign though you see that like he's not any person that bashes their ex like in, in front of you you kind of gotta you know keep your good eye on them when they do stuff like that so um they sit down and eat but 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 by the time zuri was like hey you can come eat the table i'm gonna let you finish but you know i'm gonna finish keep saying what i'm talking about and your baby mama that wayne you need to get it together hey <laughs> she was calling her everything with the child of god and so troy was just like okay ma so they sit down and zuri is visibly just like off like and troy sees it they finish eating and she's giving him the silent treatment so he goes to sleep on the couch and so the mama's like is everything good like you need to go talk to her that show your woman he was like ma let me handle it like i handle it in the morning and she's like shoot do something because i don't want to be here uncomfortable and i was just like <laughs> this woman although she is very entertaining like i said she could not be my mama so they wake up the next morning and zuri and troy basically make up he comes in and, and was like look don't let my mama like ruin nothing like we fought for this you know ain't nobody you know who been through through the stuff that we've been through and he's like so don't let nobody get in between it and she's feeling like yeah okay but here it is that nagging feeling in the back of her mind because y'all what did that tarot card tell her girl this is a no go wrong road wrong road okay and so now Ziri's just sitting here thinking like am i missing something yes yes you are you're missing the fact that uh, you are already told to turn your ass around all right but yet you're still going down this road so when you hit that brick wall at the end of it don't be mad at nobody but yourself because zuri is trying to convince herself that it's not what it is like as she said she's like you know don't be trying to turn red flags green she's like and she's like i feel like i'm doing that especially when it comes to his baby moms um so they start getting ready for church and the mama's like son you know you got you know something for my dirty clothes because dang i realized i didn't even got no panties either she's like so I'm, I'm just gonna be out with no panties on and it's like ma'am we, we did not know it need to know that then she talked about she done took some two gummies and i'm like not two like especially on the way to church like one i mean cool it might help your body you might got some aches and pains but two like so now they get to the church she lit all the way to the church talking smack oh oh this church in the hood <laughs> and he was like mama then they said he started talking about all the churches that he was um a part of and the mama ends up basically filling us in that she's like well that one church you thought you was going that you was becoming a part your daddy didn't walk you down the aisle to church he walked your ass down the aisle to get married and that's so crazy because uh we were still getting like i was pregnant with so and so i'm assuming that was his sister uh and uh, he was just like mama like mama damn like she is too much info i feel like she's one of those women who does like to speak for like the shock factor and she's an antagonizer she likes just talking shit until somebody dare tell her like woman like chill out bro um and then she's gonna pop off she you can definitely tell she's the pop-off queen
All right, y'all, I'm back. This chair is about to send me through the roof. I really don't know if y'all can tell, like, how drastic it is. I'm starting way up here, and then by the end, I'm down to the basement floor. It's really agonizing me, but let's just continue. Um, so, yeah, they make it to the church after after the grandma done read, read it down boots. And the dad is preaching. She's like, you know, it's a very upbeat church. Music is good. So everybody's in there, you know, praising the Lord, got this hammering and everything. And she's like, oh, shit, the music good. You know, she she turning up basically, you know, because by this point, the weed kicking in. And then, you know, the dad is preaching. And the mama's like, he kind of like a comedian. He was basically one of those patches that was a little bit more, more up to date. It wasn't just so like those pastors who are so formal and just like they drag out the word. It, it like unrelatable. I'll put it that way. He seemed like a relatable pastor. And he also does like live services where, you know, a lot of pastors nowadays, they do it um, over live so people can watch it from home. Um, and so uh, basically they're sitting in the front seat. Now the mama, you tripping to sit there and think that Troy going to come out and become a minister. I'm hoping Troy will come out and be a minister and help push the word. Ma'am, to have an expectation of him already, uh, that's a lot. Um but yeah, they in the church, basically, you know, just listening to Karen talk shit the whole time. And they just shaking their head like this. And Zuri's worried because she's like, I got to have this woman meet my parents. And I just know, like, it's, it's, it's not looking good. <laughs> so yeah, at this point, Mama Karen over there embarrassing everybody. But it's definitely going to be entertaining, I think, to see what it's going to be like when um, she meet, uh, get back to meeting uh, the baby mom. Because Zuri is also feeling like, well, you know, I want to at least have a good relationship with her because, you know, I will be around her child. So we'll see how that plays out, y'all. Uh, y'all drop in the comments to tell me do y'all think um, it's going to work, you know, uh, when it comes to Zuri possibly being cordial with the baby moms. But moving on, um, so Letitia and Keith, real fast, y'all. Letitia is overwhelmed with the fact that she is financially on the hook for, th for, these, for this man. This happens to a lot of these women on here. They just think about, oh, the love aspect of being with an inmate. Oh, I love him. You know, he give me all the sweet nothings that I want to hear. But you are financially responsible for man. You put money on his books. But if you're a woman who's paying for, you know, do some lawyer's fees, because that's what they do. They want you, they going to put you on the hook for making sure that they taken care of. And now here it is. Tisha is uh, on the last episode is told that Keith actually may not be qualified for uh, getting the early release. So now she's going to go talk to this dude who I guess is a paralegal, not an actual lawyer, but she felt like that's almost like a waste of time too, because he ain't really delivering on what he's saying. Like he actually is a man who got himself out of prison, which is cool. Dope. There are a lot of, uh, uh, men who have done, who've gotten their stuff out of prison represent other people. So I'm not saying that that's not a possible thing, but, um, She's kind of feel like right now this man feels like I'll talk to and I'm feeling like lost in the wind because I done told everybody, you know, this he this man, he talking basically like we're going to get him off. You know why? Because we found a discrepancy back in the day. You know, basically his sentence was illegal and he was telling the truth of like a lot of times these public defenders are bogged down with work. Like they literally just be telling these men take the plea and move on to the next. So he definitely is right in those regards, but I hope he's not one of those men just taking advantage of people who want, like, the reason he's got a good record of getting men off is because he finds some lucky mistake versus him actually doing, you know, a, a job defending the type of uh, sentence he got, if y'all get what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, Tisha, Letitia, she go with her friend to, to get a drink and she's like basically just venting about how her life feels like it is going down the drain. She's like, basically I'm struggling because you know, I'm paying for your, for this man, paying my staff. And then I got my life. I got to take the scraps after that to take care of my life. She's like, how did I get myself in this mess? And the friend was a good friend and just being like, you know what, you'll it's okay to fall down, but you'll get back up. 
And the moments where you be like talking to yourself, feeling like real down about your life, you really do be like, just like, damn, like the chips are down. You really do not feel like it's ever going to get up. But at this point, she ain't got no choice because you got your kids involved. And that's why I be so mad with these women because Letitia is sitting there thinking like, oh my God, what do I do? You know, I'm embarrassed. Like not only is my personal life in flames, but my business life. And in the confessional, they were like, oh, what's going on with your business? And she's like, mm, I can't say that. And she was like, you know, it's just so much on me. Like, I don't want to be girl, be a big girl anymore. Like, it's just, you know, trying to take care of everything is just so much. And then I started thinking, because they were like, her business is going down the drain. And, uh, and she, you know, she do taxes. I hope you ain't over there, you know, signing some papers, putting your signature on things that, is getting approved that may not be you know be getting be, be, be approved you know what i'm saying y'all you know when you work with that tax money them taxes you want to be careful because the irs come in and shut shit down okay so i'm hoping i'm hoping that she she ain't you know working in the gray area to maintain keeping money for for this man um and truthfully honestly i i feel like i'm looking at her face like Cause she's like, you know, uh, the other uh, daughter cried. She's telling a friend like, you know, I'm so mad because it's like, dang, like I told his family, I told the girls and like, she cried and she did. The girls, I just want my daddy. And I'm just like, see, this is where you careful. Stop introducing your kids to these niggas because now I'm looking at her face and she's like, I don't know what to do because you know, like, um, I basically you can tell she's really bad at herself for getting her daughters invested to the extent that they have because now you can't just drop him now you're stuck in this situation had her daughters not really been attached to this man shoot we know the oldest one don't give a damn about him but the way that youngest one is attached to him she now is obligated to stay with this man when had she not been she really could have dropped this man and been like taking her hands off like eh, you know do what these niggas do chunk the deuces but i she can't do that because now here it is you got this little girl crying talking about daddy get out tomorrow and it's like this is why you don't do shit like that it like it really irks me when these women do that um so yeah right now she's literally in a hell hole um and last but not least you guys shantae and true Shantae, everybody did try to tell you, and I really do feel bad for Shantae, y'all. I promise you, I really do. This nigga true. He out at the gym, meeting up with uh uh the sister friend uh Tisha or Tisha that was basically flirting with him, putting her see on a platter for him before he got locked up. And now that he's out, she trying to jump his bones to hop on that prison Zeke, okay? And she, 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 she throwing the cat at him for real. Meow. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, he trying to act like, oh, you know, I, you know, I got discipline. She, you know, all up on him. You know, I don't respect your situation, but if you need uh, anybody to talk to, you know, I, anytime. And it's like, girl, you don't respect shit. Like, you don't respect nothing about that situation. And true, sitting here talking about, you, you know, uh, being with Shantae, you know, I love her, uh, but you know, there's definitely things we got to work on. True really is trying to convince himself he's not the asshole that he is because he goes back. Shantae been at the house all day, like by herself doing nothing. Like you're making it as much as it is Shantae not getting out and doing something with that man. He hasn't initiated doing something individually with her. Like you want her to get out the house. Like it would seem that, oh, let's go do something. But Shantae don't want to do nothing with his family. And it's like, dude, if you want to spend time with your family, cool. But also understand you still got to initiate something with your woman, Shantae, who literally y'all blew up her life for this man. She got no job. She lost her job because they found out about her in, uh, being in a relationship with him. Um, and she had a good paying job, just got a raise and everything. She bought that house uh, for that man to come live with her. Blew up, when I tell you blew up everything. And so now for this man to come back and act like he ain't did nothing wrong. Oh, what's up? Why you, why you? He was trying to gaslight the shit out of her. So he basically goes to her and was like, I've been thinking about it. And 
uh, we just too different. Like, this ain't gonna work. So Shantae was like, cool it in. She was like, don't talk to me. Like, she gets up, she starts packing shit up, okay? She's getting, she's about to get ghost. And now here he is talking about, uh, here, you know, so you don't think I used you. That's all he kept repeating. Like, I hope you don't think I used you. You know, I didn't use you. Like, yeah, yeah, you did use her. And you know you did. And the thing is, Shantae knew that too but was so low in her security about herself and her just being very insecure and insecurity paired with desperateness to be with a man makes women do a lot of stupid shit like it just does and Shate not only dealing with those things but not even healing from her essay situation you know she was looking for a way to fill that void and True knew that he knew that, which is why at the end, when she got in the car, he was like, You use me, yeah, you tricked me, you don't think you use me. She's like, For what? He was like, For love, and she was like, No, nigga, I loved you, that's the problem. And see, that's what he knew, like, she was looking for some type of emotional bond, and so he took advantage of that. And so now, here it is, Shantae, her family, she's like, I knew, like, I knew better, you know, my family told me. And now here it is, like, I blew my life up for, for what? Like, and my family told me, Shantae, put yourself first. And I never put myself first. And here it is because I didn't do that. Like, what do I got to show for it? And so she leaves. She goes, skrr, on his ass. And he called a sister talking about me, me and Shantae over. And the sister said, Kerr, I was like, oh, you also one of them. You one of those sisters that when your brother bring the third helpful vibe for this cookout you sit there and act like he ain't brought jessica last week and want to bring rochelle this week and she acting like she just like she ain't a part of this this collusion like that sister is whack but she also knew her brother didn't want that that girl so she had no reason to be invested in shantae because she knew off top just off gp she know her brother like you don't want that woman and she knew he was getting out of the situation what he wanted. Um, and at the end of the episode, Shantae, you know, when she screwed off, she literally just stops to calls her brother and stop crying like, I knew it. Like, I knew it. And y'all, I felt so bad for her. I really, really did. Um, True, what I tell you, that nigga True was doing everything to gaslight her into making it seem like it was her fault. Like, he then really had the nerve to also say something like oh you know Shantae know I've been locked up like I'm free now and for her to sit there and expect me to just be some angel like she knew better than that like she knew what she was getting into that ain't that what men always say when a nigga fuck up she knew what she was what knew she knew what she was getting into she knew who he was and so that was something True told himself also as well when Shantae kept calling him. He knew she was desperate for love and attention, but also she knew what it was like when a dude got out of jail to expect him to just want to sit still and be with a woman is crazy. That's basically like what he told her. So yeah, this ain't gonna work. Breaks off the engagement and then acts like he ain't do nothing. That's why Shantae literally had to keep walking away from him. Like, nigga, I got nothing else to say to you. Like, you... And the horse she rode in on. Kick rock open toe shoes, bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys. That was um, Love After Lockup. Another really good episode. Next week, we see Kim and Joey. Shit about to go up in flames, too. Um, yeah, you guys. Uh, Y'all tell me what you feel about the episode. I appreciate you for tuning in. Sticking with me through the whole thing. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to my channel. And I will catch you hoes later. Deuces.